Happy New Year! Woo! We made it to another year and I would just like to thank you guys for coming along with me in this architectural journey. Anyway, since it is New Year, I decided I would do a little bit of, you know, New Year's cleaning. So I decided to clean some of my closets and guess what I found? Actually, you guys don't have to guess. It's probably in the title of this video. But for those of you who did not read the title, I found my old architectural portfolio that I used to apply for my first architectural apprenticeship job. Okay, so what we are going to do today is I'm going to show you guys my old architectural portfolio and I am going to critique it to show you guys what are the things you should do and what are the things you should not do when creating an architectural portfolio for your job application. Okay, let us begin, shall we? Okay, so for the main cover of my architecture, portfolio I decided to go with this PVC sheet right here to make my portfolio a little bit more weatherproof and then for the spine I decided to go with this bolt fasteners or these are called screw fasteners and then for the back part I used another PVC sheet and then this sturdy illustration board to give my portfolio a little bit of sturdiness you know and it makes it a little bit more premium feeling and you know people like sturdy things you don't want a floppy notebook that you hand over to the interviewer and it just flops over you want your portfolio to be sturdy stable just like your personality Okay, let us move on to the front page. So behind the PVC sheet, I have my front page. So I didn't know why I had to turn my first name red. I don't know, I just thought it was cool to make my first name red. And then I have some random ass design on this side, which I wish I didn't put because, you know, it doesn't really give any context as to what my portfolio is. It surely doesn't represent me as a person because this is all messy and stuff. There's a bird there and then some squiggledy lines. I don't know, man. So yeah, one tip. Keep the front page of your portfolio as minimal as possible. Or if you plan to put on any design in front, make sure that it makes sense or it gives context to your whole portfolio. Let's move on from that. So the next page is my curriculum vitae or my competencies. Here we have the schools that I went to. So I have my education, St. Louis University, Bachelor of Science in Architecture. My high school and then my elementary education and then I placed my prior work experiences so I worked for air construction I work as a part-time supervisor for that company Wow! so many of you may not know this but I was not the best during college so I had a few delayed subjects because I failed a few subjects and therefore I had a bunch of gaps on my schedule so yeah it took me seven years to graduate so because it took me so long to graduate college uh, I actually had a ton of free time to visit construction sites and I took advantage of my disadvantage. Just a little backstory for those of you guys who are failing. Do not give up and do not worry. You guys can turn that frown upside down. That makes no gosh darn sense. What the f Let's move on. And then I have my language. Fluent in English and Tagalog and then adequate in Ilocano. And on the other side of that, we have my competencies. Here I have my computer skills, yada yada yada. Then we have my signature, which is not actually my actual signature. So I just placed it there because I had to have a signature and my signature actually looks like it was made by a third grader. Well, actually my signature was made by a third grader because I created it back when I was in third grade and it hasn't changed since. Let's move on. So next page, we have my table of contents. So one thing to note is that make sure that the type of papers that you used all throughout your portfolio is the same because my front page is a different type of paper stock from my curriculum vitae and my table of contents which is not a good sign so yeah Pastlian, if you're watching please change the paper stock make sure all of the papers are the same because it doesn't look good i digress okay so let's move on to the table of contents so for the table of contents i decided to organize it with this color coding scheme so i put 3d renders and then when you look to the right of the portfolio there's a corresponding color to that table of content items okay so my whole logic behind this whole weird table of contents right here is that i thought to myself that hmm architecture firms would probably want an apprentice that is organized and creative at the same time. So what better way to show that than a table of contents, which probably in hindsight makes no sense. But you know, a good and creative table of contents will go a long way. So, okay, let's move on to the first item on our table of contents, which is my 3D renders of interior scenes. So here we have a page divider for that specific section of my portfolio. 
3D render slash interior scenes. And then underneath that, I've written the various softwares that I have used for these 3D renders. That is very important to let the architectural firm know that you know how to use this softwares. Okay, let's check out my interior renders. Next page. One thing that I would comment on this is that I wish I placed some descriptions as to what these architectural perspectives are and maybe a little bit more context and also I wish I just placed the pictures all together, you know, join them together, no more white lines and then the pictures should have been until the edge of the paper. I think that would have been real cool. Okay, let's move on. So again, we have blank spaces right here. So what I wish I would have done is I wish I made this whole picture larger, like a whole page up to the edges. Also, I got to stop placing my name on the pages. That's one rookie mistake. Don't place your name on all the pages. So I bet I did that on all the pages. Yes, I did. Dang it, past Leon. <laughs> Next, a dining room practice render. Next, here we have some of my thesis renderings. Some more of my thesis works. Let's move on. Next, we have the 3D render slash exterior scenes. And again, I placed the softwares I used. Good touch, past Leon. So let's check that out. Here we have the images of my renderings. So one thing I would comment on this is that I wish I would have placed my design process or how I came upon this whole design right here because that is one thing that architectural firms are looking for. Include your design process, maybe a little bit of sketches and stuff like that. That whole design process would have made this whole page more understandable because if I didn't know what this was and I just opened it on this page, you know, it will just look like some random image taken off the internet. Yeah, that is a huge part of architecture is the design process. So make sure to include that. I don't know how I got hired, man. I was probably the only one applying. Yeah, th that makes sense. Next page. Okay, here we have a park that I designed in my free time. Uh, I wish it was a little bit brighter. Again, I placed my name there and then I have my name here. Make sure that you don't plaster your name all over your portfolio. It will look a little bit uh, desperate. I wish this picture was larger, like it would have taken up the whole page. I wouldn't have any problem with that. It would have made this portfolio look like a professional magazine. Next, oh, here we have the exterior view of my fifth year thesis. So this is the exterior front view. And then here we have the exterior rear view. That's a little bit boring. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind when deciding what things to put on your portfolio, make sure that you put your best works on your portfolio don't just put some random images like this because you know the interviewer or the architect who is looking at your portfolio might get bored when they see this and just decide to skip your whole portfolio so yeah don't be like me okay next page here we have an exterior view of a house then here we have another residential design and then here we have some of my school work so 3d max piranesi and then 3d max Again, I should have placed descriptions as to what softwares I used for these various renderings that would have made more sense and it would have made my portfolio a little bit more enjoyable, you know? Anyways, I am sharing this information with you guys so that you guys don't go through the mistakes I had to go through. Okay, let's move on to the next section of my portfolio, which is 2D drafting or working drawing. So I wanted to show this architectural firm that I knew how to use AutoCAD and PDF Factory Pro for some reason. I don't know why I had to place that there. Unfortunately, my floor plans are too gosh darn small. Dang it, Pastlian. I should have made the floor plans larger, like one floor plan per page. Make sure when creating a portfolio that all the text in your portfolio is legible or readable. So at least 10 to 12 points for your font size would have been good. Next, we have photography slash random images. Okay, so what I was thinking back then was that I wanted to show them that I was not just an architectural student. I wanted to show them that I also knew how to take pictures. So let's see if past Leon took some great pictures. I'm pretty sure these are bad pictures, guys. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> what the hell is that, dudes? All right, dang it, man. So apparently back then I thought that a picture of my neighbor's house was a good picture. In hindsight, it actually looks real bad right now. I don't know why I had to add that, but this picture of the ladybug is actually good. And this silhouette of some trees with the moon in it, good. A random picture of a bush. I wish I didn't place that. And then some random still life macro photography right here with the leaf. Next, okay, here we have post-processing slash layouting. So here we have the layout of my fifth year thesis. So if I was to give past Leon some critique, I don't know what's up with the corny font and this like call outs and this circle thing in the middle. 
and stuff like that. It's super complicated and I'm actually getting confused right now just looking at it. So if you're listening past Leon, go the minimalist route. It is the best route. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Okay, here we have the concepts I had for eco-minimalism. Here we have more of my layouting skills. We have my materials and then some elevations, then exterior perspectives, and some tiny structural concepts. You guys get the point. I wanted to show them that I knew how to create fancy Photoshop layouts. Let's move on to the second to the last portion of my portfolio, which are scale models and exterior. And we have a bunch of pictures of my old thesis scale model. Okay, so one comment I would like to give past Leon is that you should have included pictures of you actually constructed this and you know some creative methods that will let you stand out from other applicants you know like how did you do that tree that would have been real nice if there was a picture of the materials that i used for the tree i should have shown some pictures of me cutting the entourage and creating this gate right here and you know stuff like that that will make the portfolio more interesting so let's move on next we have scale model slash interior here we have a picture of a diorama i did back when i was in fourth year or third year i believe next page here we have some sectional scale models okay so one tip when creating sectional scale models is make sure that you are sectioning along an area where the differences in elevations of your floor plan could be seen so for example, right here, we could see that the garage floor line is lower than my first floor line. And then you could also see the second floor line right here. And then some stairs going to the roof deck or the third floor. So yeah, that is a good section right there. Good job, Baslian. <laughs> and that is it. I guess that concludes today's video. So if there is one thing to be learned from this video right here is that make sure that your portfolio is as good as it can be because your portfolio is going to represent who you are as an architectural student. So once you leave your portfolio at the architectural firm, that is the only thing that is going to represent you. You won't be there to defend your portfolio. So make sure that your portfolio is as perfect as it can be. And I guarantee you guys, if you do so, you are going to get your dream job in your dream architectural firm, no problem. I guess I'm going to end this video right here. Again, Happy New Year, my dudes. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you on my next video. Flying peace.